This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and kick the chapter off by, first of all, valuing our equity. Now, these first few pages of the notes, there's nothing new uh, that you haven't seen before in F1 that we went through oh, ages ago now, didn't we, as part of our weighted average cost of capital calculations. Uh, so let's just go through and play around with valuing our equity. And in the first scenario, uh, we are looking there whereby there are constant dividends. So if there are constant dividends, then the growth in our dividends is zero. Okay. And what we're using when we're looking at valuing our equity to work out the value of a share, we're going to use the dividend valuation model. So things that are important. Are your dividend today is that the D0 uh, and also the rate of return that the shareholders require the cost of equity okay uh, excellent uh, so what we need to do is we need to look at the dividend stream as a perpetuity going from time period one to infinity okay uh, if you want the theory uh, go way back to the F1 lectures uh, and there you have it Let's just crunch the numbers okay we'll talk about the theory as we go along so it wants us to work out the calculate the current market value per share uh, so here that wants us to work out p0 doesn't it uh, it goes through there and says doesn't it alpha plc has an issue one dollar share and has just paid so if you have just paid remember that is looking at your price Div. So in the first few examples, we're going to look at our X div valuation, uh, and we are told that uh, that we have just paid a dividend of twenty cents per share. So that that is our dividend D zero, which will be D one, D two, D three, D four, D five, D six. Why? Because as this part of the section says, dividends are expected to remain constant. So if that's the case, G equals zero. And the required rate of return is the is it at ten percent, isn't it? Okay. So to work out your price x div, we just do d zero divided by k e, don't we? Uh, so here d zero is twenty cents, and the return is the as ten percent. So putting it in there as a decimal, zero point one zero. Tapping that into your calculator should work out, is it at $2? That is the X div price, isn't it? Okay. Happy with that one? Hope you are. Okay. If that's the case, have a go at example number two. Okay. Should be pretty straightforward. Okay. So, did you go through? Uh, stop the video. Uh, and work the example. I hope you did. Okay. If I give you the chance to, to try and go through there and work things out, do it makes your life easier. Uh, you should hopefully get the value there. Is it as one dollar twenty five? Okay. Uh, and that has come from there. Is it your fifteen cents per share? The return is zero point one two. So that works out at one dollar and 25 cents again dividends are expected to remain constant so if that's the case g is equal to zero isn't it okay and again as we have just paid a dividend then the price that we are working out there is our price x div okay happy with that sure yeah it's just Working things in a different manner, isn't it? In F1, we had to work out the cost of equity using the price, the dividend and the growth rate. Now we're just rearranging it to work out the price. OK, yeah, that, that's all you are doing. Working in reverse. OK, however, what you will recall from the days of F1, uh, there was that difference, wasn't there, between the cum div and the X div. Uh, so the cum div incorporates the value of the dividend about to be paid. So it has not yet been paid. Once it is paid, the cum div price will fall down 
to the x div price, doesn't it? Which gave us that formula that your cum div is equal to the x div plus the dividend about to be paid. Okay. Uh, so what have we got there? Uh, if we put that in as an example, it says calculate the cum div market value per share and x div market value per share. Again, dividends are expected to remain constant. So again, growth is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, it says beta PLC has in issue 50 cent shares is about to pay a dividend of 15 cents. So therefore, we are looking at the cum div price. Uh, of 15 cents so that is d0 isn't it okay so to work out the x div you need to take the dividend to date which is the as 0.15 and divide it by the return which is the 0 0.12 okay so it's the same scenario as the previous example so the x div value is $1.25 isn't it okay because we have there don't we Okay, the only thing that's changed in the example is this bit there. Okay, we are about to pay a dividend. Okay, so to work out the cum div, all we need to go through and do there is take the x div of $1.25 and add on the dividend that is about to be paid, which gives me there is it $1.40. Okay, excellent. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, just be aware, I think there is a formula that you could go through and use uh, to work out the cum div price. So P naught cum div, you don't need to work it out. It's D naught multiplied by 1 plus K divided by KE minus G. Okay. Whereby here the dividend was 0 0.15. Uh, KE is 0 0.12. And we divide it by 0 0.12 less 0 because the growth is there as 0, isn't it? And if you tap that into your calculator, hopefully you're all adept at using your calculator by now. Is there is $1.40, which, memory serves me right, is the same figure as what we had there. Okay. Uh, you could, if you want, work out that formula. Don't. Okay. That would just be ludicrous. Okay. There we go. Uh, so that's it in terms of looking at your value of your equity with no growth and constant dividends. Uh, we'll look in the next video at how we go through that and value equity, whereby we have a constant growth in your dividends.